here's an example of sinus rhythm. Sinus rhythm at 75 beats per minute. Uh, we're showing the inside of the heart, uh, which shows the atrial kick and the ventricular contraction as well. So remember that we are considering the atrial kick in our lesson today. And I want to slow down the cycle speed of this so we can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Set it down to about seven percent. So right here, we're going to be talking about the DV node. I'm sorry, the SA node going down to the AV node. Those two atria are contracting just prior to ventricular activity, depolarization contracting, which tops off these ventricles and gives us that cardiac output or that stroke volume, right? So we get the atrial kick from right here, starting now. There's that atrial kick, tops off the ventricles, and finally the ventricles contract, pumping blood out of the aortic valve, through the aorta, and also through the pulmonic valve to the lungs, okay? The right side to the lungs, the left side to the aorta, to the body. Okay. So that's a slow down cycle speed. Let's move it back up to regular speed. And we see that atrial ventricular, atrial ventricular, atrial ventricular, moving back and forth continuously. Right. Let's slow down the beats per minute. So we can see it in a slower EKG rhythm. We're looking at sinus Brady now. We put it at a rate of 20 so we can actually see how quick it still happens. We see the atrial contraction followed immediately by the ventricular contraction. And then we have ventricular diastole, which is the relaxation of the ventricles. And that's the passive refilling of both the atria and the ventricles, okay? The atria refill from the superior and the inferior vena cava, and the ventricles are filling uh, from the atria right atria, and then also collecting back from the lungs for the left atria. Okay. So let's look in comparison to the 75 beats a minute or 79 beats per minute of sinus rhythm versus that of atrial fibrillation. Okay. I'm going to slow down the cycle speed so we can see what's going on. Obviously at this speed, if you look at the edges of the atria, you can see that they're basically just quivering, okay? They're not really pumping. There's too much atrial activity going on. So let's slow down the cycle speed to 10%. Look at all of the firing of the foci in the atria, okay? Whole bunch of impulses being begun in the atria but only certain impulses are going to be conducted through the AV node and then into the ventricles, okay? Now, when we're looking at the EKG right here, we see that we still have a narrow complex, which means we're moving down those fast electrical pathways, those little superhighways, in the normal fashion in the ventricles, okay? But since we do not have P waves, that means we do not have an atrial kick, okay? Which means we do not have topping off of the ventricles just prior to ventricular depolarization, okay? Which is the point at which there is ventricular contraction, okay? So this is the big difference between atrial and ventricular rhythms is, especially when we have a supraventricular rhythm that usually does have P waves, that we're getting that extra 20 to 30 percent topped off into our ventricles for that stroke volume. Specifically, we're talking about the left side of the heart. Generally, they're moving the same amount of blood in the left and right ventricles, uh, the, the right side going up to the lungs for perfusion, reperfusion, uh, and reoxygenation, but the left side to be pumped out of the aorta to the systemic circulation or to the body. Okay. So we have it very much slowed down here, but it's to recognize that we don't have a solid atrial kick, okay? Mo losing out on that kick is going to be um, the, the major issue with atrial.
atrial fibrillation.